What's going on guys, this is Riley. Uh, thanks again for all the support that I, I've gotten for the uh, the first three videos that I put out. Uh, thanks again if, if you've been able to watch. Uh, this passion project of mine is, is awesome. I'm, I'm really excited to continue this going. Uh, so I, I decided to, to finally sit down and, and make my fourth video today. Uh, it's been about over a month since I made a video. Uh, my wife went back to work and so that means I'm officially a stay-at-home dad of two boys now and so my schedule has been a little bit different uh, than when my wife was home and uh, trying to get used to it and adjusted and really back onto a rhythm but today I'm outside on a sunny day in Wisconsin uh, I took the boys on a walk they're both nice and snug in the stroller and uh, they're getting a good snooze in so I figured this would be a great time to sit down and do a video um, I'm going to sit down and do a video on a, on a topic that I think is really important to me. It's something that over my career I've, I've learned. I've seen it both ways, uh, the good and the bad way. But um, and that topic is defining, defining terms and defining expectations that you have in your program uh, and that you use constantly. Um, to cast vision, you know, to clear up expectations, I think it's extremely important that we clear all gray space for ourselves and for the people that we are either coaching or we have on our teams uh, that we're leading that we we create we create definitions for terms that we use a lot you know if you use terms like success if you use terms you know like uh, effort things like that character discipline those things are really important that we define, but it's also really important that we define those terms within the vision that we're casting uh, in our programs and in, in, our, in our companies. And what I mean by that is, you know, we can create a vision and then creating a vision has a lot of prongs off of it. And so with those you know, with those prongs that come off of it, you create subsections of your vision. You know, we are, you know, brotherhood is a, is a common one in football, right? Like brotherhood and then off brotherhood, you have different things that, that make up the brotherhood. You know, I, I know this a past year where I worked at, uh, you know, like brotherhood and then, and then we had like seven characteristics of brotherhood that made up the brotherhood. And then what we did was, is we define those things. And, and what that allows you to do is it allows you then to clear up any gray space that's happening around your program, right? And it allows you to catch people doing things right because they're doing it in a manner and in, and in the way that you want them to do. Uh, and I think those are things that are really super important. Um, but I think I have to start for my own self with, with the base level of this. And it's something that's come back recently in my own life is you have to make sure that you have a vision and a direction that you're going. Whether it's a mission statement, whether it's a it's a program, you know, a, a, an acronym that you're gonna use that then that that's what you lean on every day in a program or in your for your teams. Because if if you just if you just kind of go about it, if you just kind of show up and you're asking people to do things and you're asking them to show up and and work hard and but there's no, really no thing that, they're, that they can lean back on. There's no vision that's been cast. There's no idea that they're holding on to. Then I think what we're doing is we're allowing for them to kind of build their own, their own mottos. And if we allow for that, then, then they may go in a different direction than we want them to go. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a college in Georgia that's uh, the head coach is a... Is a a good friend of mine, he recruited me, you know, they, they're the Vikings and, and they say, you know, they're saying is we all row, you know, and I think that's, you know, that's a PJ, PJ Fleck, row the boat, things like that. That kind of stuff is sometimes as it gets wordy and sometimes as, as we don't like it and it's it's like, oh, you know, it can make you gag a little bit. It, it really does create a vision. It really does set a standard that everybody then has to follow and they know what the standard is, right? Like, because, you know, row the boat isn't just one thing. It's not row the boat. It's a bunch of subsections then that create expectations. But, you know, creating that vision is super important. And I'll give you an example for, for my own life. So now that my, my wife has gone, my wife has gone back to work and it's my job with, with the two boys at home. Uh, the last time that I watched, I, I watched the boy or, my my only boy at the time 
without my wife, I had a football season. It creates a lot of purpose. There's practices every day. There's film to be watched. There's game planning to do. We were very successful, right? It creates a lot of purpose. It creates a lot of to-dos. I'm a to-do person. So I, I'm constantly checking things off. Well, my wife's gone back to work. Uh, I recently stepped away from coaching uh, just to, to make sure that I could focus on staying with my boys. And after I stepped away from coaching and my wife went back to work, it created this void. It created this purpose void, this void of, of vision. Where, where am I going? What am I doing? Am I just showing up every day? And, you know, my wife reminded me of like creating a mission statement, creating a vision for myself as a stay-at-home dad. Like, what do I want to be? Where do I want to go? How do I want to cash vision for myself? So I can hold myself to the standard. And, and when I accomplish those things, when I hit that, that mission statement, when I can lean back on it on a day that's hard or, you know, that it doesn't feel like I've really accomplished anything, I can lean back on that mission statement and say, am I, am I leaning into that? You know, so I created this mission statement to be the brightest light in my boy's life and their lives. Um, and so every day, my goal is to be the brightest light in their lives. And now light is a general term, you know, like it, it, it can mean so many things. It can make you, it makes so many feelings, right? Like, like light right now, I'm getting sunlight on my face. It feels amazing to have this sunlight on my face. Uh, light, light lights up a room. It brings happiness. It brings joy. Uh, it brings empowerment. So that's what I'm trying to do every day. But without that mission, without, without that guide and vision, I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I could just walk around in this void and wondering and not feeling purpose and wondering if I'm accomplishing anything, right? So I think casting that vision and, and a lot of people have mission statements. A lot of, a lot of pro companies have mission statements, but then it, what happens is you have to come down and start to create your subtext of how you're going to accomplish that mission statement. You know, for me, it's staying organized. Organization is one thing. So uh, I'm a to-do person. So cr creating organizational places of to-do lists, kids play, things that I want to accomplish with the kids that day is is part of br bring, being a bright light in their lives because that's how I know that I can be at my best. And I think defining those types of, of, of terms and things that you need to do in your programs will help you. You know, I, everybody you, you loves to use terms like success, character, discipline, hard work, effort, pride, all those kind of things. <clears throat> well, I think it's really important that we then define those as what that means for our program, not necessarily what it means in the dictionary, but how we address it and how we define it in what we do. You know, um, I think, you know, when, when we created it, when, at one of the places I stopped in, I had a, in my college, college coaching career, we define discipline and character in the way that we address it as a program. Not just characters doing the things that you do, you know, doing the right things when nobody's looking. Okay, everybody gets that. But but in our program, it's not. It's that plus X, Y, and Z as we hold high standards. And I'm holding you to those standards. So that if you don't, if you don't get to those standards, then all the, then I'm going to be able to hold you accountable to those because you know the definition, right? Like what is the definition of success for your program, for you? You know, success means a lot of things. There's a there's a great book called The Game of Life, um, where it, it, literally this the, this author interviewed 50 of the greatest coaches across sports, and in in there he's got a he's got a a section where he asked each coach to define success, and he got 50 different answers, 50 different answers from 50 coaches on what success actually means to them. So if you think you know that your kids know or your team knows what success is, you, you're gonna get a bunch of different answers if you really ask. So I think it's our job as, as leaders to then define and narrow the focus to what we wanna narrow the focus to. Success is X, Y, and Z. Success for us in the off season is having 100% attendance in the weight room, having great communication when things aren't, aren't gonna happen, when, when you know, you're gonna miss or something like that. You know, and two, two or three other things. <clears throat> more the idea of what is effort you know maximum effort is is working hard okay well what is working hard you know those kind of things sometimes we take them for granted because we think everybody should know 
but they don't. You know, and I think, especially when it comes down to working with kids, you know, like, when you work with kids, they got a bunch of things running around in their head, and it's the same thing for adults, but but kids, you know, I, I, my the kids, my boys are a lot different. They're really young, but their their attention span isn't long. And it's the same for high school. It's the same for college kids. Their attention spans aren't long. They got a million things that are happening in front of their face these days. Uh, they got a million things to distract them. And so defining those things so that they can come back to them, and then and then not only just defining those things, but then continuously putting it back in their face to remind them. And, you know, I think those things are so important. And, you know, like a, 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 like putting something on a wall, everybody wants to put a motto on the wall. I, I've seen a million quotes on weight room walls or when you walk into corporations. <coughs> but how often are you coming back to that quote and telling everybody why it's there and what it means to your program and to your teams? Because it's one thing... To, to, to create something and then put it up. It's a whole nother thing to live it. And you have to live it. As a leader, you have to then breathe life into that so that it becomes a living thing. Your program and, and the way you define things has to be a living organism within what you do. And so that's really important because if it's just there, nobody looks at it. You know, I, I was thinking about, as I was thinking about these things I was thinking about like reminders on my phone. I used to have six reminders a day on my phone to remind me of things that I needed to take care of. <coughs> Reminded me of reminders on my phone. I used to have six reminders on my phone of things that I need to take care of or things that I want to remind myself of. And for the first two weeks, I had it on there for about oh, for over a year. Every day, same time every day. You know, after after so often, it just becomes white noise. Unless you sit down and really focus on it or remind yourself what it means. And sometimes as an individual, that's really hard. It takes a lot of intrinsic motivation to, to really like, really dive into that and be disciplined each and every day with that. But as a leader, like that's, that's kind of, that's our job. Like that's why we're in the position we're in is to then breathe life into the things that we want to breathe life into, into the direction, into the vision and how we're going to get and accomplish the vision. That's why we're there, to remind those around us every day what we're trying to do, you know? And, and so those kind of things of defining terms and defining words within your organization, within your program are so important. And, and don't think, the minute you think that they understand, they don't. They don't understand because, the, the, you know, like how often... And I'm, I'm one of the biggest victims. I'm one of the biggest culprits of this. You know, like, I think they got it. I think they understand what I'm saying because I understand it, but they don't. So it, like taking time to define and come back to, and, and so they understand and then repeatedly define things is really important. You know, um, so a couple other things that, that I think that defining the terms, casting vision and defining the terms do for you and your organization and your teams and your programs is, is this, it allows you to be, it allows you to be harder on them and not in a way that like, we're like, I'm talking about like coming off as a jerk and you're yelling. A, no, like it allows you to hold them to the standard because the standard is very clear. There is no gray area for what you're asking for. You didn't give me your best effort today. And how do I know? Because this is how we define effort and this is what you gave me. Do you disagree? And you can flip and put the onus back on them. And they will then take the responsibility because they know they didn't live up to the standard because it's clearly defined. But I do think those things are so important. So important to have clear expectations so that you can really, really coach them hard uh, and you can really keep them to the standard. And I said coach them hard. I, I mean that in a general term too. For people that are that are working in a corporate setting, like coaching is so important in the corporate setting. And and really coaching just means that you're not a player anymore. You you take yourself out of the playing role and you have assumed yourself on the sideline. And when you're a coach, sometimes it's really hard. It's hard to be a coach. It's hard to to not want to run the route for them. It's not want to make the make the shot for them. But 
is to be able to step back and to be able to empower them and to enable them to accomplish something by setting, by creating clear standards and defining the terms and, and the way that you use things and your and your vision. And you know, the, really, the last thing that I I want to end on is this. You know, I, I talk about coaching them hard or keeping them to the expectations, being able to to really set the standard and turn the onus back on them when they don't meet the standard because it's clear to find. The, the last thing is this, man. When, when, you, when you define things, when you clearly define things within your corporation or within your program, you are going to catch a lot more people doing things right than you are going to catch them doing things wrong. More people are going to meet the standard and more people are going to be accomplishing things. And you're really going to be able to really empower you know, and, and really kind of show the appreciation that a lot of guys and a lot of, uh, a lot of, of, of women are putting effort towards what you're trying to accomplish and the vision that you do when you clearly define things. Because it, sometimes we get willy nilly with things and we don't, we don't clearly define things. So we don't know how to tell people, good job. We don't know how to say like, man, you are meeting the criteria that we have set. And that, they, that you are you are driving the vision forward because of how you're doing things. If we don't have clear expectations, if we don't have clear definitions, then you can't, do, can't catch people doing things right because then you're just guessing the whole time. And so when you create those clear expectations, those clear visions, those clear definitions of, of what you want to see from people, you catch more people being right. And if there's one thing if there's one thing that as leaders we need to continue to do a better job of, man, it's telling people good job. It's reminding them that we see them. It's reminding people that we appreciate what they're doing. And we know how hard they work. We know the time that they take to sacrifice for what we're, what we're asking. And, and when you have clear definitions, when you have... I'll say when you have a vision that's, that everybody can understand, A, everybody feels a part of it. B, everybody feels like they can do it and they know what to do. And when they do it, you can tell them good job and you can tell them that you see them doing it. And so often at times we miss just, just telling people around us, man, great job. You're really, you're really doing it, man. Like you are really pushing this thing forward. And I know in sports, what can happen sometimes is a lot of times the star players or the people that make the most shots or, or hit the most home runs, like those are the people that get praised, but they're not always the people that are driving it. They're not always the people that are driving the vision forward. They're not always the foundation of what you're trying to do. And so you have to have the ability to catch the people that are trying to do, that are doing things right. You have to have the ability to catch them doing things right and tell them that you see them. So again, that's why I think defining terms, defining vision, and then really breathing life into that vision by making it an everyday thing is so important. Because then you can really hold people to the standard, but then you can really catch them doing things right. And you can really build people up and make people feel a part of it. And so, um, you know, those things I think sometimes can get caught in the in the whirlwind of our day to days and get forgotten and get forgotten so uh you know again i think just to kind of recap what 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 i'm talking about is you know when you when you have a a team that you're leading it doesn't matter whether it's in corporate america it doesn't matter whether it's in sports high school college it doesn't matter youth sports you know being able to define your vision clearly cast it clearly defined terms that you're going to use and ask people to then, you know, hold people to those terms and what you're talking about, clearly defining those terms allows you to then drive forward. It allows everybody to get on the same page. It allows everybody to row in the same direction, to come full circle. Um, And so it's those things to make sure that you take time to do it. Make sure that you take the time to really cast the vision for for where you're trying to go and then helping people define the, the, the things that you want them to do. And when you do that, I think you're going to see a ton of success. Um, well, thanks guys again for listening. Thanks for taking the time to, to support the videos. Um, 
I am working on, on my first blog post. Uh, so hopefully that'll come out soon. Uh, writing is extremely foreign to me. This is a much better medium and much better, much better way that I communicate is talking. Uh, but I'm, I'm finishing up a first blog post. Uh, I'm excited to share that out soon too. Uh, and I think I'm going to get back on LinkedIn and, uh, and start to share some things out on LinkedIn. And so whenever I do that, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and attach that to the, to the next video or to this video whenever I get that done. Uh, but again, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Uh, please leave any comments, any questions. Uh, follow me on Twitter at CoachHill24 on Twitter. And, uh, and uh, thanks again, guys.